Welcome, everyone. We are so excited to have you here today and to have Dr. Um, Gleason here with us to present. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself and our team and just say a few words about Gray Muzzle. So my name is Lisa Longhofer. I'm the executive director of the Gray Muzzle organization, and I'm joined by Amanda Grant, our administrator, Laura Merrick, our communications and impact manager, and Heather Hayes, our creative content manager. So for any of you who may be new to Gray Muzzle, we provide funding and other resources to animal welfare organizations across the country and in Canada. Um, in July, we awarded a record setting $705,000 in grants to 78 animal welfare groups. So we're really excited about that and um, our, the donations of our supporters make that achievement possible. So thank you to all of you who support our work. Um, the other piece of what we do is providing resources um, related to senior dogs and their well-being. And so this webinar series is, is part of that effort. So I'm delighted to have Dr. Dawn Gleason with us here today. She is a veterinarian, a certified veterinary acupuncturist, a certified veterinary food therapist, and a certified rehabilitation practitioner, which, wow, that is amazing. Um, she's also the owner and operator of Life Quality Pet Care in Minden, Nevada. Life Quality Pet Care was built on the belief that quality pet care is a lifelong commitment between Dr. Gleason and her clients. Together, their job is to make patients' lives better by increasing their mobility and strength while keeping them comfortable into old age. Dr. Gleason provides veterinary services to dogs of all ages and sizes, specializing in canine rehabilitation and senior dog care. She utilizes an integrative approach, combining Western medicine with acupuncture, rehabilitative knowledge, lifestyle advice, Chinese herbal medicine, laser therapy, and massage. So we are really excited to have you here, Dr. Gleason. I can't wait to learn from you. Um, just one housekeeping note, we will have time for questions at the end. So if you have questions, please type them in the Q&A box if you're joining us on Zoom. If you are joining us via Facebook Live, you can include your questions in the comments and we will try to get to as many as we can. If we don't get to your question, or if you think of something afterwards, um, we'll have some uh, contact information and we, we'd be happy to follow up with you. So with that, I would like to turn the virtual floor over to you, Dr. Gleason. Thank you again so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate that introduction. Um, I'm honored to be here with you guys. Um, like I said, um, well, I said, like I said earlier, when we were practicing, um, one of my biggest passions is older dogs. And um, it's my career. I, I didn't start out that way, but it's definitely worked into that. And I'm, I'm honored to be here with you guys. So thank you. I hope everybody um, is ready for um, some of you, it's morning. Where I am, it's morning still, and I know where some of you are, it's it's early afternoon. So um, good morning and good afternoon, and we'll we'll get rolling here. So um, my topic is uh, senior dogs, um, changes uh, that we can do to make their lives safer and easier. And we can go to the next slide there. Do you see the next slide? There we go, perfect. Um, so I like to start with this one, it's pretty simple. We do not stop playing because we grow old, we grow old because we stop playing. So it's my goal, um, I think so many practitioners goals um, to help our dogs keep playing. We may have to modify how they play. And you know, it's just like you and I, we may not be out there playing basketball at 100% um, percent, but we can still go out there and play. And that's, that's what we wanna do. We wanna keep them moving and have them, you know, having a good life and a quality of life. So we can go on to the next. So for this webinar, my goal is to go through um, several things. First of all, I just want to talk about the aging process. Um, you know, that involves a lot of different things and we can talk about that for, for years. Um, but, uh, the, you know, I want to go over the most important things, decrease in vision, uh, mobility changes, strength, endurance, and coordination. 
And throughout the whole um, topic, I'd like to talk a lot about patience. Uh, it, is, it is the core to working with an older dog and working with anybody that's older. Um, I think patients, I was on a webinar with Ava Frick um, several months ago and uh, she, you know, she's like to sum everything up, uh, patients. And I was like, dang, I mean, that's, it's, it was, it was just an enlightening moment. Um, patience with our older pets is so important. And sometimes we do get in a rush and we do get in a hurry and they aren't moving as fast as they used to, or we have to do a few extra things. Um, they need a few extra supplements, something like that. But that patience, they've had patience with us their whole lives. So I think that's really important to sometimes just take a deep breath and realize they are older and they aren't, they don't have the same vision, the same mobility, the same strength that they used to have. So um, next thing I, you know, that I'll cover in this webinar is you know, every pet has a different set of circumstances. Um, you know, each pet, you know, sometimes I'll, when I was in a big practice where I went out to meet my patients and clients, you know, they all talk. And um, even though some of them have similar problems, they still don't have the same whole list of problems. Um, so each each pet is, is different and we have to you know, assess them, I, well, we assess them the same, but, you know, we have to look at their different issues and their strengths and, and all that sort of stuff. So um, we have to bring all that into play. And then um, I'd like to talk, you know, in this talk about a plan for navigation around the house and a yard and in the whole bigger world. And then finally, I want to encourage everyone to start early. So if you're on this, this, um, talk this webinar and your dog isn't a senior dog yet. Yay. I'm glad you're here too. Um, if your dog is a senior dog, that's okay. Um, it's, I'm here to help you guys as well, but the younger, um, dogs, please, you know, you're going to make that transition smoother. If you start working on it earlier, next slide, if we can. Okay. So lifespan changes. I chose this picture, um, purposely because, um, I think you can look at this picture and you can, you know, get a lot out of it. Um, several changes occur within our animals' lives as well as our lives. And, and when you have an increased lifespan, this picture, I'm not 100% sure that the, the dog in there is older. Um, he's very attentive. He or she is very attentive to his owner. But his owner, what I love about this picture is his owner still has him out on a walk. He's still moving. He's still doing stuff, even though the owner is obviously older. So um, treating patients with multiple diseases uh, is challenging, but what I want you guys to think about uh, on a daily or at least a weekly basis at home is putting yourself in your dog's paws um, and watching them from a distance too. So both putting your, yourself there in their paws and seeing like what their challenges are. Remember they're lower to the ground. Remember, um, you know, their age, think about their arthritic, you know, legs, think about all those things. Like something that gets me on the street is it's like a, it looks like it's an old cobblestone street. Um, maybe not the easiest to navigate. Um, so those are all just things to think about. And then lastly, and we'll cover this in, in the talk, but simple modifications can sometimes make a huge difference. Um, so we'll go over a lot of those today. Okay. I think we can go on. Perfect. So aging in humans versus animals. I love to start with this. And um, I like to think about our aging parents in comparison to our, um, or our grandparents, we're all different ages, um, and kind of compare that to our animals. If we can go on to the next slide. Um, my mom is 76 years old. And um, that was her actually, she wasn't 76 in that picture. But <laughs> um, and if she's on this, I hope she's laughing a little bit. Um, so she's 76. So I like to think about what is like the best comparison I can come up with is about a 60 pound dog. That's about 12 years old. You know, there's a lot of different things that say ages and seven years, and there's, there's all sorts of different research out on that, but let's just say a 60 pound dog that's 12 years old is probably between like 76 and 80. So what are the changes in a human that's 76? I, I use 76 because that's my mom's age. It's easy. I, I see the things that are happening to her. So she's walking a little slower, um, but she's still, you know, she's still walking. So that's important. Keep our dogs walking. Her bones aren't as strong, um, but she's, you know, exercising. And the more you actually 
you know, the more concussive forces and things like that you have, the stronger your bones are going to stay. If you just stay um, like a couch potato, then your bones are going to get even weaker and weaker. Her vision isn't as good. She wears glasses. Well, that's a little harder in dogs. Um, and we'll, I will, you know, kind of talk about some things to do for their vision. Actually, that's next. And her balance and coordination are sometimes a little bit off. Um, and her brain is slightly, you know, getting a little bit slower. Um, so she does little exercises like Sudoku, Mahjong, Mahjong, bridge, um, socialization. So think about things with dogs. We can take them to the dog park, possibly. That's not always the answer. Um, we, so I like to compare Sudoku to canine enrichment activities. And I'll, I'll go over some of those today as well. Um, but things... In dogs, there's a lot of research recently that says that then their noses are working, um, their brain lights up. And so the longer we can keep their noses like engaged, um, the longer we can keep their brains going, which is important. And mental health is equal to overall health. So, okay, I think we're ready for the next one. So vision, um, I like this slide, I hope, People are able to read it. I know it's kind of slow, but Bernice regretted going with the cheaper vision plan. Um, <laughs> if only we could get glasses on our dogs, I think I, it, I think it would make a huge difference in a lot of things. But it's it's really not that simple. And um, so, what can we do? So things we can do to make things easier. Um, at, and before I go to the at night, um, so dog's vision in general, it just gets worse over as they get older, just like ours do, does. I just turned 46 this year and um, gosh, my vision has <laughs> depleted in a year. And so um, dogs, they have really good vision, um, distance vision, but their close-up vision isn't as good just naturally. They're a predator prey species. So they, they see things moving quickly. That's, that's their life, right? Um, their livelihood is that. So they, they never have really great vision up close, but it definitely gets worse and worse as their limbs harden, just like ours do as they get older. So um, anyhow, as those limbs are hardening, they, they see more of a blurry thing. They don't get as good of focus. And um, so things we can do to help them. We, we can't fix their vision. We can feed them good, high quality food and things like that, because that does have an impact on vision. Um, but um, keep the lights on at night. And I'm not saying all the lights, but maybe have some night lights in the hallway um, if they get up and move around, or if you have to get up to let them go potty at night, make sure they can also see. Um, it's important for you and I to see, but it's also important for them to see. Um, so, and make sure there's a good track, you know, that they can move around in when it does get dark, because we, we want them to be able to move around safely. Um, Another thing that a lot of my patients have issues with is, um, my clients have issues with, is their older dogs will start taking treats out of their hand. You know, you'll have a treat and they'll grab it. Well, um, if there's another dog around, that's one thing. Um, but if they're by themselves, I don't, I really don't think it's a matter of trying to chomp your hand off or get it before the other one gets it. They can't see it very well. Have you ever had um, a kid? I, I remember doing this to my parents. I'd bring something up to them and be like, look, look what I got in my paper or whatever. And they would automatically you know, pull it out. Um, so that's kind of their vision. They can't see that really close up, but they can smell it. And so they know they want to bite it. So just be, you know, more careful with your hand, you know, hold it with an open hand, but also, you know, sometimes maybe move it around and see like what distance they can see it better at. Um, and that might help a little bit. We can go on to the next. Um, another thing with vision, don't move furniture around the house. Um, uh, I mean, if it's if it's a middle aged dog, sure, move it a little bit. Um, but you know, don't make big, huge furniture changes. Dogs do memorize things, and as they get uh, older and they lose their vision, um, knowing where everything is, they have like a mental map. I've watched so many blind dogs maneuver the world so beautifully, and um, they really do. They have a mental map in their head. They know about where the wall is and they start slowing and then they'll move and turn. And so if you put something that's not normally there in their way, that's going to be hard. Um, think about the fact that they are, you know, a predator prey species. And so um, if your vision didn't work as good, would, you know, if you were out on a hike, you might be more concerned about what's, what's going to happen with that. 
Um, so, you know, as they're in, in, on a hike when they're outside, they might hold a little closer to the normal and that's, that's okay. Um, they might follow you around more. That's probably because you're their pack leader and you're their everything and they know that you're gonna, you know, help them. So just, just pay attention to the fact that, you know, if they are sticking around you more, um, that's okay. That is because you are their everything. Um, also the predator prey mentality. I, I like to just, like this is another situation where I say put yourself in their paws or you know just think about what it's like to be them and um, how you can help them. So you know being there for them I think is is the very best thing and just having patience with you know if they are a little more fearful on a hike or something like that. Um, dogs also know things before we do. They can smell things that we have no clue about. So so listen to them. And I think we're ready for our next. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate it, Laura. Um, so uh, mobility concerns. Um, we just talked about vision, so mobility. Dogs, uh, they need to go on hikes they, or at least walks every day. You know, even on, as you're getting to their last day, do what they want to do. But, uh, you know, most dogs, that is one of the things that makes them the happiest. So please please still take them on a walk. The number one thing I see as a, as a veterinarian and working with rehab patients is a lot of owners get to me and their dog, you know, is sadly overweight um, or just can't even hardly move anymore. And I say, are you still going on walks? And they say, no, we stopped about two years ago when I could tell they were limping. So please work with your veterinarian. Um, we, we want them to be moving. We want them to be walking. And it's an evil cycle. If we stop walking, um, what happens is um, it, you just lose it. So if you don't use, if you don't use it, you lose it. Um, so that is, is a really important component. Um, so, but you need to take into consideration their exercise, you know, abilities. So don't, don't go on a five mile hike with your geriatric pet. Um, I mean, if they've worked up to it and, you know, some dogs can still go on a five mile hike, but don't go from every day going for a 20 minute walk to um, a five mile hike with friends on the weekend. Weekend warrior, um, I call it weekend warrior syndrome. It is not good for our older pets. Um, I can't tell you how many people will be like, oh yeah, we went on a five mile hike and now, um, you know, Fuzzy can't, can't move his, his legs at all. And uh, number one, they're super sore and no dogs aren't going to just stop walking they love to be out there and they need a parent to tell them nope this is what we can do today um so just take that into consideration low impact exercise for older dogs um think about the owner's abilities too like if you go back to that old pic that that first one of the first pictures i showed you with the the older man walking his dog on the cobblestone streets i mean he he can't take his dog on a five mile hike, but he had his dog out and he was walking him. So it's really important. Um, make sure to warm up and cool down. Um, every sports team in the world that I know of um, really pushes warm up and cool down. Um, if we could get our dogs to stretch, that'd be really awesome. Um, but that's a whole nother <laughs> discussion. But, you know, at least warm them up. If, you, if they're going to be off leash and running around a little bit, then have like at least a five minute warm up or they're on leash or, or, or close to you. Um, and then um, if you're changing the intensity level, you need to um, do this slowly. And I say over several minutes, but it just kind of matters what the dog's like, but or several weeks. If you're trying to work up to where you can go on a two mile hike or something, um, then don't do it, you know, don't go from a 20 minute walk to a two mile hike. You need to work up to that. I think we're ready for the next one. So um, some concerns. Um, exercises that are rapid or complicated, you know, so, and when I say that, I mean like sharp turns, jumps, um, that's, that's rough. Um, we want to, you know, go on, if you're going on a hike that has, um, I don't know, <laughs> I try and avoid these hikes myself, but a hike where you have like huge, big steps or, you know, uneven rocks, things like that. That's not probably the best hike for your older animal. Um, getting in and out of dog doors. I'm going to show some pictures on that in a minute. Um, but that's a really big, important one that's inside your house. Getting in and out of vehicles. I'll also show you some slides on that. Um, 
just getting up and down and walking through the house. Also, there's some slides coming in a second. And then finally, I don't have any of these slides, but if you if you go to the dog park, um, that's, a, that's something a lot of people do with their dogs. And, you know, I have, there's pluses and minuses of dog parks. You need to know your dog and know that, you know, and I think you also need to know the people and the dogs that are there. Um, so take your time if you do go to the dog park, but realize that your dog might not want to be jumping around with other dogs. And, you know, if your dog's starting to fall over, things like that, I, I like this picture, this dog in this picture, you can just see in his eyes. But if another dog came and like, you know, uh, nudged him um, or her, you know, that might not be the best thing for her. So um, if, if there are a bunch of older dogs and they're kind of doing like parallel play, that that is appropriate. Um, I have a client who takes his dog every day to the dog park and he goes and gets treats from his favorite people. <laughs> and I don't think he even sees, I don't think his dog even says hi to the other dogs, <laughs> maybe, but he loves to go get treats from all the other people. He knows which ones have treats and everything. And so it's a socialization for him. Um, so, you know, that's good, um, but know what's right for your dog. Um, that dog is older and it's not ideal. It's great that he gets out and goes walking. Um, and, you know, talks to other people, but um, it wouldn't be ideal for him to try and romp with another dog. Okay, next. Okay, so here's some pictures and I wish I had access to my um, thing, but I can, I'll talk about it. So um, when you're doing ramps, ramps are actually really important. And the sooner you can get your dog learning how to use them, the better. Um, Ramps can make a big difference in quality of life. I'll just tell a quick story. My own dog, I have a like 30, 45 pound dog and we have a high bed, just like the picture um, in the corner here. And um, my dog can easily fly off that bed in a second. And it looks beautiful, but over time, the more she flies off that bed and even jumps up on that bed, that is really hard. When she flies off it, she hits her front limbs and then her back and uh, every dog jumps almost the same way. So um, that is not good for her over time. You know, if she does it a few times a day, not too bad, but you know, she does that 20 times a day, that is quite not good for her and not good for any dog. And, you know, I, doing what I do, I see dogs with back injuries. I see, I see all sorts of injuries, but back injuries are, um, have to do with a lot of jumping and especially jumping down. So the bed um, in the picture, I like, um, it just kind of shows you um, how you can make a ramp. And my dog, when she was three, I think we got the ramp. Um, she didn't need it yet, <laughs> but I foresaw that she needed it. And, um, you know, she still doesn't use it 100% of the time, I'll be honest. Uh, she's eight now. And, um, but <laughs> at least if she uses it 50% of the time, she's decreasing her risk of having issues by 50%. So I, I just like to think about that concept. So um, this, the picture of the bed, you can see, I, I love the ramp. Um, the ramp is great. Uh, the rise over run is really important. So the longer the ramp that you can get for a dog, the better, because if they're going up a steep incline, they're not going to want to do it. It's scary. Um, and um, it's, it's actually not that great for them. So um, especially going down a steep incline. Uh, you also need to make sure that the surface of the ramp is, is right. So a lot of dogs will get um, a surface that is, uh, the one here is, is a good surface, I think, but I don't know if you've ever seen like the chalkboard like ones, it looks like they have a little bit of grip on them. Um, dogs dig their nails in and they slide on them. And so just make sure that your dog is good with the surface that's on them as well. Um, in this picture too, I'd like to point out uh, with the bed, um, the floor at the bottom. So I like that they have the ramp. The ramp is great. And I like that they made it like two levels as well. Um, however, the floor is a wood floor. And so if that dog was jumping often on the bed, you would not want that at all. Um, so you would, if they were jumping and you didn't have a ramp, the next thing I would recommend in that picture is to get a, um, a yoga mat or a runner or something that at least if they're launching themselves on and off the bed, that they don't slide and slip on the floor as they do it. Okay, the picture coming down the ramp here. The thing I'd like to point out too, so I can't tell how good the rise over run on that one is, um, but um, it, you know, the dogs 
coming down at nicely. He seems very comfortable with it. Um, things with ramps. So a lot of people will will just get whatever ramp they can, and they're they are too steep, especially coming out of the vehicle. So some tricks: if you can get the tires, if your tires can go into like a ditch um, or a gutter or something like that to make your car lower to the ground. Um, that's, that's a good trick, or you can even back up to like a sidewalk um, to where, so it will raise the ramp a little bit and make that rise over run a little bit lower. I think we're good for next. Harnesses, harnesses are something to get your dog used to. These two harnesses are from a company called Help Em Up and I'm not here to promote any brand or anything. I've just had so much, much success with these harnesses. I like how they spread out where the body is um, being, you know, pressure on the body. Um, and they also make it better for us humans. So you can see there's two handles on them. Um, I, you know, most dogs don't need this yet, but if they do need something like a little help in the back end, it's really hard on our bodies to be lifting them up and, you know, pulling them up. And we have to be there to take care of our pets. And so we need to use something that's better for us too. So that handle, is is great and um, they come in boy ones and girl ones so um so it doesn't press on you know private parts that are important so um you know i i do like this brand are there a few others out there there are i have never had as much success and with any other brand as i have with this one and no i get zero kickback so don't worry about that um so that is something to consider. And if your dog, if you know your dog has something like degenerative myelopathy or a, a disease that's going to cause their back end to start getting worse and worse. And I'll just tell you, I'd say like 80% of labs and big dogs, anything lab and bigger um, is most likely, unless they have another medical condition, that is probably the most common medical condition as they get weak in the hind legs. So getting them used to something like that is, is so ideal. Next. Okay, so this is like my ultimate. This is what I want you to think about when I tell you to put yourself in your dog's shoes. So I I think almost every dog has done this. So the FedEx or the UPS guy comes or whoever comes to your door. The doorbell rings, the dog jumps off the couch, slides around the corner, falls down, gets back up, jumps on the couch, barks and growls at the mailman. Is this ideal? Absolutely not. Um, but our dogs do it day after day, and even probably when you're gone. Um, so what can we do? Next slide. So flooring is a must. Um, I have shown you in this, this picture has several different, this uh, slide has several different things, but um, every time that dog slides and slips on the floor and falls down and gets right back up, I think us as humans, we think, oh, they're fine because they have an ultimate goal. Remember that predator prey thing, <laughs> they are gonna get there um, no matter what. So um, how can we make it easier? How can we make it better for them? Um, the more times they slip and fall, the more ouchies they're gonna get. And even if they don't tell you they hurt, I promise you they hurt something. So the picture in the middle, this dog is, uh, that, that makes me pain to see the, how that dog is. Um, most likely a slippery floor there, um, I can't, you know, really tell what the surface is, but it, it really looks like it's a, a wood floor. Um, so a simple, you know, fix for that would be what's up in the left-hand corner. And that is, you know, a dog that has uh, a, a nice yoga mat. And you can see they have several through the, the hallway. So um, yoga mats, runners, um, they work the best. I will say that you can do kind of what I, the person did in the upper right hand corner. And that is they got, um, they only carpeted part of those stairs. And you can do that with a yoga mat too. You can cut a yoga mat and just make it on the side. Your dog, I've had maybe one or two dogs in my career not use it. And I've been a vet for almost 20 years. So um, not use the yoga mat or whatever is there to make it a non-slip surface. If you think about it, a dog walks just like you and I do most of the time on normal surfaces. But if they walk on wood floor, um, if you watch them from a distance, especially they'll, they'll tighten up like you and I do when we're walking over ice. So that's how I like to explain to people what a wood floor is to a dog. It's, it's like ice. Um, they learn to adapt and they deal with it. 
but I'm not telling you to get rid of your wood floor. Um, I am though, however, recommending if you can do something, some modification to make it towards not slippery. And yes, you can start that early. You don't have to wait till they're old and slipping on it to do it because it's still affecting them. They're holding their, their arms up. Um, so, you know, I say their arms up, they're tight and all that. So um, that is a really important one to do. Um, or say, you know, I work with a client who is um, in a wheelchair and she has a service dog and um, she can't put runners down in her house. So every situation is different. So in that case, um, you know, we've just worked, we, we've actually put some on the sides for her, like um, they did in this picture with the, um, with the stairs. So uh, in some places where her hallways and stuff are wide enough, uh, we provided, you know, some runners along there that are very thin, like think about your dog's width. So that's how, how long it has to be. Um, so, um, or you can do something like this um, in the lower left-hand corner, and that is um, they have dog booties on there. They're non-slip dog booties. Um, some dogs will put up with that and some dogs won't. The other thing you have to take into consideration is you have to be capable of putting those on the dog too. And you can't leave them on for too long. Um, a lot of people just want to leave them on, but that's dogs don't sweat like you and I. Um, and so they, they, they just can't have those on all the time. Um, and then the stairs, if they are going to be going up and down stairs, which I don't necessarily recommend, but if they're capable of doing stairs, then having non-slip stairs is important. I like the ones for the little guy in the upper right. He's pretty cute, but um, <laughs> I would say that those stairs are a little much for him, uh, for his size, if you look at his size compared to the size of the step. So something to take into consideration. Next. Dog doors, dog doors are a big thing. Um, and I don't think there's the single dog door in this, this slide that is actually ideal. So this one in the over uh, in the left um, is probably closest to ideal. But what I would do with this one is, um, and this is um, the Aussie like dog over here. And I would put um, more bricks. So you can see the bricks at the bottom of that house. The issue is that the lip from outside to inside is, is a big difference. So on the inside of the house, it looks like it's probably about this high difference. And then you can see on the outside of the house, it's it's this high. So that's, that's quite a big difference. And um, for an older dog, that's hard. And you also wanna make it to where they can get in and out of the dog door, their whole body can come in and out of the dog door easy. So for a fix for the one on the left, the big picture on the left, I would recommend um, bricks to um, carry out that further and so to make it so that lip isn't as big um, because an old dog is going to have a hard time um, you know maneuvering through there um, the picture in the middle at the top I mean you can just see it in that dog's like feet and everything that that dog door I like how they have the step there that's perfect that's probably a good angle with the house but the dog door itself is too small for that dog so um, not ideal at all uh, the next dog door down in the middle, um, that dog, uh, I like that, uh, has a huge lip, so I don't like that part, um, but I like how they at least built the, um, the step for when he comes out, but I would take into consideration that that's slippery. Um, <laughs> the dog door on the bottom right, I mean, that's just, I think that's supposed to be funny. I think that's a cat door, um, but <laughs> in general, no, 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 no. And then um, the dog on the upper right, um, he's too tall for that dog door. So, you, you know, dog doors are great. They have a great purpose, um, but uh, make sure you have the right fit for them. I've seen so many injuries um, from dogs with dog doors. Um, and they aren't injuries that you and I necessarily visually see. It's their back hurts, their legs are, you know, all messed up. Um, so just simple changes that you can hopefully help fix them. Next. Okay, so metabolic changes. This is a really important one. Just like older humans, the you know, older animals have a decreased metabolic rate. So they don't move as fast. Um, and they, I say they don't move as fast. They don't need as much um, uh, calories coming in. And so we, we definitely need to change that. 
Um, about 20% is what some studies say. There's even some studies that say that we need to decline their intake by even up to 25%. So obesity is one of the most common nutritional disorders in our animals. And how can we stop that? The best thing is movement and decreasing intake. And at least when we do have intake, it needs to be high quality, clean food. And that's a whole nother discussion, but um, it's definitely something to take in um, with a senior pet. Clean food is, is really important. Next. <laughs> so to help combat that, you know, I said intake, um, but also getting out and exercising. Um, I call it, actually, Dr. Ava Frick uh, calls it the olfactory journey. I like how she says that. Um, I stole that from her. Um, but going on a walk is, is fantastic for our dogs and getting them out and getting them moving. Um, but it's, it's such a combination of not just moving, but their mental health and smelling. So get them out, walk them, even if it's a five minute walk. I mean, I would love a little longer, but even if it's just a five minute walk, that's so important. Next. So I'm going to kind of slide through these pretty fast, but the neurological changes, um, you know, decreased vision, we talked about decreased hearing. So they're just not as cognizant of the environment around them. So um, also they do have decreased smell and decreased taste. Um, so if your dog's not eating um, food <laughs> that they usually do, um, A, keep, uh, I, I really believe in, you know, switching things up, making sure they're getting some um, variety, but also, you know, sometimes if you just work on the smell, so um, warm it up for a few minutes, add warm water, add warm chicken broth, you know, everybody has a different diet thing, but um, something to where they can smell it better and um, then perhaps they'll, they'll enjoy it more. Um, so decreases in these senses creates difficulty for our older patients as they are unable to perceive the world around them as they once did. So how can we help that? Next slide. Um, cognitive decline is another sensory loss. And we're in the next few slides, we're going to talk about that. But I really want to uh, make a big deal. It's been found in humans that people that keep actively involved in intellectual and physical activities seem to fare better than those that are inactive. So the worst thing we can do for our pets is to, we want, they can sit around and be lazy at times, but we need to keep them moving. I'm not talking about every waking hour, but I am talking about having a routine where they're actually, you know, walking, smelling, sensing, um, looking for good smells, that sort of thing is really important. Next slide. So enrichment, I, um, they're also, we, I also call them boredom busters. Um, so the, on the left is a snuffle mat. I don't know if anyone's seen these before, but they're fantastic and they come in all, you know, you can make your own snuffle mat. Um, but, uh, the idea is you put little crumbs or, you know, treats in there and, you know, say your dog can't go on two walks a day. Um, maybe the other part of the day, you know, so in the morning you take a walk and then in the afternoon, um, you know, you make sure that there's some mental stimulation time. It is not good for our dogs just to lay there and do nothing. We need to keep them stimulated. That is part of quality of life. Um, so, I mean, you don't have to have lots of money to do this either. Um, enrichment activity in the middle here. All you need are some treats and, um, you know, put some balls on top or, or whatever and have them figure out how to get to those treats. Um, dogs love it and they enjoy it. Go play bubbles with your dog in a safe place. Uh, make sure it's not slippery or anything. Um, but I mean, how fun is that? I don't want them to ingest a lot of soap, but I mean, a couple of bubbles, it's not going to hurt them at all. Um, another one, and a lot of people think that, you know, digging is so bad, but <laughs> and with puppies, I know it's challenging, but if you have a place that's okay for them to dig and they know it's okay, then, you know, I like this little sand pile. Um, doesn't even have to be that big, but, and for older dogs, don't, don't bury a bone deep, but, um, you know, I'm talking like a little treat or something, um, you know, put it in there and um, bury it like, you know, an inch or two, and then you can make it 
further. Another thing you can do is like scent training with boxes. You can just put a, a smell in, in a box and have them go find that, that specific box. There's all sorts of things to keep your dogs busy, um, but it is very important that they're doing something and they're going to be happier doing something. Mental health, if you have good positive mental health, makes the rest of the body healthier. Next. So some, some, just some basic mental stimulators for gray muzzles. I love that picture. Um, doesn't that dog have so much personality? I love it. Um, you see so much in those eyes. So nose work, um, like I talked about, just using their nose, using their olfactory journey, you know, letting them sniff things when you're on a walk. It's important. Hide and seek you can do. Um, you can either hide toys, you can play hide and seek with them. You can, you know, put them in a room and then open the door and go hide. You can you can do peekaboo. Um, obedience work, you know, if you have time to, you know, enroll in a class and stuff like that, you can teach an old dog new tricks. And how I try and tell people, if you're going to do like agility or obedience or, or even their scent training, there's so many things out there these days. Um, you know, don't look at it as your dog has to be the best of the best. Just go out there and have fun, which is what we should all be doing with sports and stuff like that. It's not for your old dog. It is, it's a win just to like go out and do like an activity. Um, they love it. Most dogs love doing something. Um, so, you know, and if they don't love it, don't do it. I have a client that just did a scent work with her dog and her, her daughter's dog is doing it too. And her daughter's dog absolutely loves it. And her dog is like, eh. <laughs> so that's okay. Just do something different. Every dog, just like every person has different passions and things they like, but learn what your dog's passions are and make sure you do those. Um, so find the tree trick training. And like my last one that's on there is a walk. Walk is, and change up your walks. Don't always go in the same place. Sometimes like actually, you know, some dogs just want to do the same path every day and that's fine. If that's what floats their boat, it is all about them. So let them, I play a game with my dog and she, I don't know if she even knows it's a game, but, um, when I go on a walk, I kind of let her like guide me where we're going. Now, sometimes I have to change it up a little bit, but like I kind of let her guide and she doesn't do the same route every day. Some dogs do let them do what pleases them. This is, um, this is their olfactory journey. Next. So raise feeding and drinking dishes. I'm not going to go into this in detail, but, um, you want a raised feeding dish for your dogs, even if they're a beagle, um, uh, the beagle in there, um, you want the feeding dish about to their elbow. And um, that that's important. I can't really tell how high the one is for the Great Dane there. I like the sign that said large dogs feeding station. Um, you can tell it's elevated, <laughs> um, but please elevate that to go down like this and to get your food is not fun. And it, oh, dogs will do it and they'll do it for their whole life. But if you can just do that slight change, it can make a big difference. So it should be up to about their elbows and it, their back should be pretty flat. That first picture is pretty right on on the left. Um, and so the one on the far right is actually probably a little too high, um, but it's still better than going down. Next. Okay, so keeping dogs in a safe area. So um, older dogs, if you have puppies or young dogs around, I think that's great. They usually, young dogs usually bring old dogs back to life. I, I you know, every situation is different, but I, I, I can't say bad things. The first picture on the left, I would change it a little bit. I would have the old dog on the carpet and the younger dogs on the, the wood floor. But, um, you know, these are just pictures I'm kind of using those examples, but I do think dogs need some, some time alone. So if you have an old dog and you have two young dogs, um, with them, then, you know, let them be with each other. I think that'll make them happy, but also make sure your dog gets a timeout. Um, so that's important. Another thing is if you have stairs and your dog shouldn't be doing stairs anymore, figure out a way to block off the stairs. You know, for kids, we do the same thing. I've, I've had my, my babies and my two-legged babies. And, you know, we always had a baby gate um, because stairs are dangerous for babies. So stairs are dangerous for our older dogs and um, they want to be where we are. So if we have to keep them in a certain area, then we need to block it off. Um, and, you know, that's, that's for their safety, but it, it is, it's really important. I will say, I don't like the 
the stairs there. So I'm really glad that dog's not going up and down those stairs because they're wood stairs, they're wood floors, and those are as hard as they get for an old dog. Next. Okay, special beds. Um, I'm gonna keep this pretty easy. So the bottom bed, I probably like the most. I just took a random grouping of them. Um, the middle picture is of a dog with, um, it's a hygroma. It's like a callus of the elbow. Dogs actually use their elbows when they get up. Um, and so if they're laying on hardwood floor and stuff, they often will get the hygromas. Some dogs prefer to lay on the, the cool floor. So if, you know, if they need to have something soft and a cool, um, there's cooling mats. So like where the English bulldog is, there's a, there's a, it's a cooling mat. I don't love that cooling mat because it's actually pretty slippery. Um, but you can find some um, cooling beds that are more like the bed on the bottom. Um, there, there are some out there available. So um, find what's best for your dog. I don't like the, I don't love this bed on the left here. Um, the reason why is, um, I mean, it's great. I like bolsters because it gives them something to lean up against, um, but it's hard to get into. So a dog that's having a hard time walking and moving is going to have a challenge getting into that bed. Whereas the dog um, on the very bottom, um, you can see that you know that's not as big of a lip to get up into, and then the bolsters are nice to just give them you know something to lean up against. Next, okay. So biggest things I'm going to go through these pretty quickly, but um, avoid you know extreme environment conditions. Um, something to take into consideration for our older dogs is high altitude. So um, I do think dogs like like cooler weather. So fall is like a perfect time for, I think, most of our dogs to be out and about. Um, but high heat is is terrible. So especially an older dog, especially an older dog with something like laryngeal paralysis where they're not able to cool down as well, um, we need to keep um, them cool. So cognitive training we talked about. Um, so, uh, you know, scent discrimination. I, I, I didn't say retrievals, but that's another one. But, you know, just brain busters, something to keep the brain, you know, booming. Um, never underestimate walks in a new environment. Um, if they can't walk well, how about a car ride? Um, I think that that's, you know, so whatever, but make sure you can make it safe. I uh, quit giving my dog car rides when I learned that it was the worst thing I did for, um, because she would like jump into the car and slide all over and it was just a big mess and she wouldn't let me help her. And that was her favorite thing to do is take the kids on a car ride uh, or even you know take them to school in the morning. And then one day, so I quit letting her do it. And one day she flew in and got up and I was like, I took away the one of her happiest things. And so um, what I did to fix it is um, I put a yoga mat to where she could jump into the van better and jump out and be safer. Even though she wouldn't let me help her, at least I could do that to try and modify it to make it better for her. So um, it, a big one that I haven't talked about much is addressing pain management. Please, 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 our older dogs have pain and there are so many things out there to help them with their pain. So remember, we all have pain. I look at this, I, lay, I believe strongly in quality of life, um, but I always like to, to talk to people, um, a lot of people get afraid of kidney disease or whatever. And yes, that's real, but, um, we need to make sure our pets, um, have their pain managed. I'd rather them live a shorter life and not be in pain than live a longer life and be in pain the whole time. So please, please, please address pain management with your veterinarian. Um, consider the use of acupuncture. So that's, that's no drugs, you know, um, multimodal pain management. You know, I, most of my patients I do acupuncture on, but I also, some of them, a, a, a majority of them are on some meds, whether it be herbal, you know, pain relievers or, um, you know, Western medicine, that, it's okay. Integrative care works really well. So please, please, please think about that when you're, when you're working with your older pets. Next. Start early. I think I've kind of said that throughout this. Start early and be patient. Um, raise the food dish, get, get them used to a harness. Walk daily if you can. It's the very best medicine for our dogs. Try and make your house a little safer. Slippery surfaces are just honestly detrimental. Over a long term, they just, they make life a lot harder for our pets. And um, they, they deal with it because they're amazing, but uh, it's nice of us to, to get them that. And then teach them how to use a ramp, um, getting in and out of vehicle safety, safely, in and out of the house safely. 
Uh, those are all really important. Next. Patience, love, and quality of life. I think that's kind of my motto in life. Um, allow more time to do things. So be patient with our older pets. They have had patience with us their whole life. Our gray muscles never mean to be a problem or a burden. Share your love with them. Stop, take some time and see your dog from a distance. How can you help them? Watch them from a distance. See how they walk differently on the slippery floor as to how relaxed they walk on grass or carpet. Watch them maneuver that world. Talk to your pets. I, I don't have any better advice than that. People might think I'm crazy, but trust me on this one. Talk to them and listen to them. Listen, listen, listen. What makes your pet happy? Um, what floats their boat? What, you know, I, I can't stress this one enough. Figure out, you, you've been living with your pet your whole, their whole life, so um, that, that you've had them. And figure out what makes them happy and do it. Do it. That's what they live for. Um, mine loved car trips with the kids. And um, I figured out how to make it work again. So you can do that too. Next. I may not always hear when you call my name and sometimes I miss the ball on the easy toss, but the love for you that shines in my eyes will never, ever, ever grow old. Next, I think we're almost done here. I'll just let you look over those. Old dogs are a treasure. And they make our lives so much better. And I think the final slide, Thank you guys. Um, I hope that this uh, presentation has helped you a little bit. Um, for the Gray Muzzle Organization, gosh, I can't thank you enough. It was, it, it's an honor that you invited me to do this. Um, we as a society can help our senior pets and provide them with the best possible lives. Um, I hope this presentation gave you just a few tips that might help your four-legged family members. And then finally, um, the Gray Muzzle Organization's number one value states that they believe old dogs contribute positively to our quality of life and have much to teach us about patience, respect, responsibility, loyalty, and unconditional love. So if we give to them exactly what they've given to us, the world will be a better place. So thank you guys. I think I'm uh, ready to take some questions if you'd like. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. Leeson. That was really, really, really informative. We have lots of words of thanks in the chat, um, people saying they just really appreciated all of those tips. So we do have a couple of questions. Let me see if I can pull those up. Um, Robin asks, how high should steps be for senior dogs? My seven deck steps have a standard seven and a half inch rise, but seem too steep for my teenage dog. What height would be best for border collie sized dog and what surface would be best to be less slippery? My dog and I thank you. <laughs> okay, so it's a tough one because um, I don't think there's like an exact measurement to say. Um, the the less so the less steep the steps, the better. So that's that goes into the rise over the run. So you know if you can make that rise over the run go from steep to this, that's better. Um, and that's even with steps because there's still a rise over the run with steps. Um, and then I mean. Seven and a half inches is, is big for an older dog. Um, and sometimes we can't modify it, but sometimes you can by adding bricks or something like that. Steps are hard. And um, the other thing to do is sometimes you can make the steps longer as well. I hope that answers your question. But and when I say longer, like sometimes I'll be able to uh, make each landing board like their body length. And so they can get both feet on it and then go down another step. Um, that's hard with a deck. Um, so things like with decks, I say, is there a workaround? Can you go out the front door and go around to the back? Um, there is no perfect situation, but just try and think outside the box and figure out how you can make it the best for them. I hope that helps a little bit. Yeah, and actually someone commented that there were luxury vile tile um, planks that are can be yeah. less slippery. So thank that, you. That answers the other part of the question. That's perfect. Yeah. So yeah, there's all sorts of different um, planks that you can get now, and there are ones that are less slippery than others. So definitely something to look at. Okay. Um, 
Heidi says, my dog is 16 years old-ish. I let him out to do his business, but he often doesn't want to go for much of a walk. I take him out even just a, a, a walk around the block, um, but he doesn't want to walk and I would need to drag him to get him moving. He's not so, He's got some arthritis and balance issues, but still can move around fine when he wants to. So if he doesn't want to walk, how do I get him to go? So I would try, that's a good question and it's hard. Um, I would really encourage you to try taking him to different places. So maybe to a, a different park or um, if you can get him in the car okay and safely and out. Um, that's something I would really consider is just trying different places, different smells. Um, Cause dogs, I think they get bored and you know, they let you know if they don't want to go on a walk. So in a way that's good that he's letting you know that, but I would definitely try some other options or even maybe, I don't know the size of him, um, but you could sometimes people, I, I used to hate those buggies for animals, but now I'm kind of a fan of them. Um, matters how big they are obviously, but they have some for like smaller pets that you can like push like a stroller. Um, so then you could go on your walk and then maybe halfway through the walk in a different area, you could set him out and let him walk around or smell some new things or something like that. Um, so that's a way to use something like that. Um, some people do wagons, um, but even just getting him outside and smelling the fresh air and seeing the world around him, I think is really important. So try different things is my point. And, um, and don't give up. And uh, maybe even just at, at the house, you could do like, um, I say at the house, but in the backyard or something, you could just throw up some food and um, or treats and let him go get those because then he'll at least be walking and sniffing and doing something as he goes and gets those. Great. So here's a question. Um, I have a 17 year old dog and he is mostly deaf. Do the activities change for deaf or hard of hearing pets? If they do, what do you recommend? So 17 year old. Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> um, deaf is, is, I mean, I, I would assume that he's become deaf over time. Um, and, and the question I would have is, you know, how's his vision? If his vision is still okay, um, then you should still be able to communicate quite well with him. If he's um, completely deaf and blind, um, then that's a little more challenging. And I think you just have to have that trust relationship, not change things around the house, um, make sure everything's the same. But um, I still think with a deaf dog that has a little bit of vision that you still need to get them out into the world and see things. I say see things, but smell things because most likely that dog. So when you lose one sense, usually another one becomes stronger or I, I don't like to use the word stronger, more in tune. Um, so perhaps um, doing smelling activities with him, um, doing things where um, he's like finding scents. So scent training, something like that, I think would be really good for a dog that's deaf. Um, but I would also work on sign language. <laughs> I think everyone, when you train your dog, you know, even to sit, stay, all that kind of stuff. If you start out using sign language, because um, that would be very important. If he at least has vision, he can see what you're, you're asking of him. Great. Um, we have a question about any recommendations for loss of house training habits. Um, Heidi talks about the fact that sometimes she'll take her dog out for a potty break and, and then he'll have an accident just shortly thereafter. Any thoughts about that? <laughs> so that goes back to humans and aging. And I, I hate to use it as an example, but most 90 I mean, it matters how old the dog is, but I mean, there's a lot that goes into that. Most 90 year old people have um, depends or something like that. So think about the fact that um, really put yourself in an old person's shoes in that respect. And if that it, it's tough. So I tell my clients, if it's something you can manage, then I think that if you can manage it, manage it. So there are, you know, diapers, there's um, you could try indoor potty pads. Um, Sometimes I, I don't feel like it's something we can yell at them for. There are medications if uh, if it's if it's like a leaking problem. Um, if it's really just having an accident, they might not be aware of it. So there's a lot of neurological issues that can cause you not to be aware of 
Um, pooping seems to be the number one. Um, and, and our old dogs, uh, there's a lot of nerves that go along um, that integrate your bowels. And um, I feel like a lot of dogs have it to like, you know, say just before it comes out, uh, they, they get alerted here or early on, and then they forget about it. They're tired. They're, they forget things. Nothing alerts them until it's like on its way out. And then, you know, it's too late. And um, so acupuncture can actually be very helpful with that. I'll just say that um, there are some meds to look into. Herbs um, can sometimes help with that, but most important, sometimes there's nothing we can really do. So in that situation, I would say, please, 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 you know, figure out where quality of life is. That's a, it's a tough line to draw. Um, but sometimes you have to figure in your quality of life with that too. So, and dogs don't like having accidents. So if they're always having an accident, then we might need to look at their whole quality of life. Um, Sorry, that's a tough one because accidents are, are a, a, a big deal. And, um, you know, different people can handle different things. And, you know, I don't ever want to put a dog down for, you know, for just because they're having accidents, but um, there are, I would definitely work with your vet first and foremost, and, you know, look into some holistic care, but sometimes that's just something that, you know, diapers, something like that. Um, if that's something you can do, I wish I had a perfect answer for that one. I'm really sorry. Sure. No. Um, so someone asks, is there a recommendation for food bowls or plates for my toothless seniors? <laughs> I, um, there are some really cool things out. Um, I saw them at a conference a couple uh, months ago. Um, they're like rubber plates and they have like little grippies. And I wish I could remember the name of them and I, I don't, but I'll maybe kind of look on the internet for that, um, that you can either like stick to a flat surface or, um, and then it helps keep that food in, in that area. You can do a bowl, but the thing is trying to, if you have a bowl, you want to keep that bowl in place. But um, I would try in different um, textures of food as well. Um, so not just what they're eating out of, but trying different textures of food to try and help them to make sure they're getting it in. All right, well, we're a couple minutes past the hour, but we'll just take one more question. Um, Patricia says she has a 20 year old Beagle Basset mix. Holy she cow. Both, yeah, both deaf and blind, but she loves to smell. Any other ideas for um, things that she could do with her? Um. A 20 year old dog, well, kudos. Um, I would just be, you know, just making sure your dog has quality of life. If uh, And there's so many things that go into quality of life, but, um, you know, I'm glad. I, I would just make sure to keep routines with deaf and blind to keep, um, you know, to make sure you do get them up and moving around. Um, I wish I could say, you know, exact, I, I don't know everybody's situation. So, but, keep moving around, keep, figure out what that dog loves and, and do that and do it every day. And, uh, you know, 20 is like, you know, 110, 120 in human years. So, um, that's great, <laughs> but, but I will stress to everybody, you know, I love hearing these older ages. It, it warms my heart that we've gotten in there, but do always take a step back. And I know it's a really difficult topic, but always, really review your dog's life and make sure that they do have that quality of life. We have a beautiful, you know, dogs give us so much. And so giving them that gift too of, of letting go of them if, if it's their time. And I'm not saying the 20 year old dog that's time because I don't know the situation at all, but I will just encourage people to, to look at that. Um, give them the best quality of life while they're here and uh, make sure they're still having quality of life. And something that I think has always helped me is to make a list of five things that make your dog, your dog. And, um, you know, whether that be like, they love food, they, they rush to the door to greet you. They, um, their tail wags in a certain way when you talk to them, um, whatever it is, uh, my dog, it would have been get in the car to go with the kids to school. Um, every dog, you know, something different. And so, 
write those five things down and have that list somewhere or at least have it in your head. And when that list starts to dwindle, their quality of life is, is dwindling. So that's, that's important to, it's an important topic. That's a terrific suggestion. Thank you so much for that. Um, and thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. We actually, Gail wrote, excellent presentation. Thanks so much for your compassionate and thoughtful care for our loving elder statesman. So oh. I could not agree more. I think that is a perfect note on which to end. So thank you. Thank you guys at Great Muzzle. I, like I said, I was honored to be asked. And then also um, thank you for, for working with me too, because obviously I had some issues with my computer stuff. So thank you for helping me with that. Well, we truly appreciate you and your time and your compassion and your work on behalf of Senior Dogs. So thank you. And thanks to all of you who joined us today. We hope that you will tune in for our future webinars and sign up for our e-newsletter to stay in touch. So for now, take care everyone and have a good rest of the day. Bye-bye. Thank you.